Hello, my fellow readers. It's I, Dark Symphony 777, with another fan fiction review. As always, a link to the story will be in the description below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell for notifications, leave a comment in the comment section below on your thoughts on the story. And finally, this is my opinion. My opinion is not indicative of everyone in the world, so please respect that. So, the story I am doing a review of is Tales Tardis Tales. It is a Doctor Who Sonic the Hedgehog crossover, specifically Sonic Sat AM. Give me a minute, I'll talk about that. Written by the New York Bear. I get it. <laughs> the New York Bear. Mm. Oh, I want some. I don't get enough honey. So therefore, I'm going to go to Hollywood and get all the honey possible. <laughs> so, this story is admittedly kind of interesting because it kind of, I think it, it think because I'm not I'm super unfamiliar with Doc Chu, especially this this specific doctor because it's like the fourth doctor which is from like the 70s really really old and it kind of takes a different approach to the whole idea behind what doctor who is like but I'll talk about that when we get there, if I if it, if it, if I bring it up or not, with the plot, in order to understand the plot, we have to understand the framing device behind it. So the framing device is just so you know, uh, this with the Sonic side of things, this takes place in Sonic Sat AM. For those of you who know what Sonic Sat AM is, it's basically a cartoon I released in I think the mid nine. The only thing I'm not sure about is what year specifically. I believe it's mid-90s that Sonic Sadie Am came out. Like mid to late 90s, I'm, I'm guessing. I haven't I haven't actually seen it, but I've seen I've seen clips of it. I seen a lot of clips of it. Believe it or not. Yeah, I saw a lot of clips. And this Sonic actually takes place less based off the games and actually more off the comics. I, this is actually one of the few times where the, the characters or the versions of eight characters from the comics are actually fraught, that actually show up in another medium. I think the only other time this has happened in Sonic ever was Sonic Spinball for the Sega Genesis. Yeah, it had, yeah, Sega, yeah, Spinball. I think is the only, only other time the comics were referenced in the games or anything outside of the comics. So this game, so this story kind of, so this Sonic is like very, very different from, from the games. Then again, most people only really remember the Son Sonic setting up for like all the memes involving Robotnik. I'll give myself a promotion! And of course, who can forget the ping? Who can forget Pingus? Come on, I gotta have some Pingus! Don't you mean Pringles? Yes, I mean Pingus! You're saying it. You're not saying Pringles. You're saying Pingus. Fetch me the Pingus! Snively! Fetch me the Pingus! <laughs> okay, here's your Pringles. Thank you! Nom, 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 nom. Mm, this is delicious Pingus. Nom. <gasps> the fact that this show is the only ever for that dumb, that dumb meme is just. I don't know what I have to call it hilarious or sad. But this story has an interesting framing device where uh, Sally Acorn's father, the king of not uh, the king of Robotopolis, basically wonders why Tails is acting different because he sees Tails and Tails is like he's super serious. He's very dour, he's very kind of down in the dumps. And Tails kind of tells him, it's like, well, I had a bunch of adventures with this guy named the Doctor. And, he, you know, when I when I finished with the adventures with him, I basically, you know, I kind of became a changed fox. So, uh, King Acorn basically asked him, so I'm going to take you to you and the rest of the Freedom Fighters to the parlor. At this, at this point in the story, uh, Robotnik was, was defeated once for all, so there's no more Robotnik. It's just, everyone's kind of just... Freeing up with Robotropolis. Uh, King Acorn invites the Freedom Fighters to his personal parlor. 
where Tails tells each episode in the fr- in the frame of just in frame of like little campfire stories. So already we got like a very different feel for this story because there are times where other characters do interject. Like if a character interjects during the story, they'll have like parentheses of them interjecting in like the middle of the story or in certain, or in like one episode, like another part where the author, where certain other characters kind of take the place as the narrator to make this kind of easy. If, if it's, if the story is written in third person, it's being narrated by Tails as a sort of, as the framing device. If it is first person, it is actually someone else that is kind of telling the story through their own, through their own lens, kind of, kind of differentiate the fact that, you know, Tails is, is supposed to be the main uh, narrator and the other, the other characters are just adding in different input. So already we have a very, very unique framing device. When it comes to the overall plot, this one takes place as sort of like a sort of traditional season of Doctor Who. The chat, there's a hundred chapters, but each chapter, each group of chapters is based off an episode. And each episode takes place a, uh, uh, does a different aspect of Doctor Who. So like the first up, like the first episode, chapter two to six is basically, it's basically telling you, this is Doctor Who. Hmm? Uh, episode two, I guess you can say like, oh, this is what Doctor Who does. The best way I can say the plot is, is this story is basically Doctor Who for kids. It simplifies different aspects of what makes the Doctor Who show Doctor Who, like what people like about Doctor Who, certain key events or key characters or key concepts. And they basically develop a single episode because of course you're Doctor Who and you're and the story is told through, through miles per hour. So it makes a lot of sense that, that a lot, that instead of having all these different, uh, a, a different, Thread, uh, story threads and themes going on throughout the entire season. Each episode, each episode is technically simplified to just a single concept, a single theme, a single idea based around Doctor Who, and then just telling you what you, and basically just telling what the reader. Okay, here's what they are. Here's what they do. Here's how Doctor Who solves it. Let's move on. <laughs> and it's a very very simple formula. You can do a simple formula as long as it works well. And I honestly think the author actually does this very, very simple formula really well. Because it, in my opinion, I don't think this story is meant to be a very, very overly complicated. A very in-depth on, on the Doctor Who or the Doctor Who verse and stuff like that. Because again, this is based around the fourth Doctor. Other Doctors do show up. We get like cameos from the ninth Doctor, which is... Um, the uh, Doctor Who sort of thing, and then we had we had a cameo of actually of we had a time where uh, Tails actually hung out with the first Doctor, and then the final and then the final arc actually had a ca- cameo by the Peter Capaldi uh, Doctor Doctor uh, Doctor Twelve. So it's so we had like so we had a lot of fun with the whole idea. Like the author had a lot of fun with the idea, had a lot of fun. But ultimately, I think the point of the plot of how of why it's written like this is he wanted to write a story where anyone anyone who is unfamiliar with Doctor Who, like like for instance me, I am not familiar with Doctor Who. I don't know Doctor Who. So in essence, this story is technically supposed to appeal to someone like me, someone who doesn't know the lore, someone who doesn't know the characters, doesn't know anything about Doctor Who, and simplifies it to a way that I can understand to try and get me into the, sto- into the world and try and explore. So I think that's what the point of this story is. It's not supposed to be a deep, complex story. It's supposed to say, here's, here's a bunch of lessons. Here's a bunch of key core ideas for the show. Simplified in a way a kid simplified in a way 
that someone with no experience in Doctor Who can't understand. Here you go. Oh, you finished the story? Go watch the show. Go do it. Do it. And I think, and I honestly think there are there are stories that should tee. And I actually, and I guess the best way I can say for this type of story is, I think these are, these types of stories are actually very important. In if it's a show as as very very complex complex as Doctor Who, because despite the fact I don't know anything about Doctor Who. I do know that Doctor Who being like a show that has a sort of 50 year, 50 plus year continuity of sorts, that it would be very, very complex, very, very hard to, uh, to keep track of. So it makes a lot of sense why there'd be a sort of, a sort of, a, 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 a 101 guide on certain con, of certain conflict like this, like episode one, like I said, episode one. Who is a doc? Like, this is the doctor. Episode two, this is what the doctor does, along with the Cyberman. Uh, episode three, teaching you about the companions that Doctor Who has. Basically, the idea of companions. Episode six has Gallifrey. Tell you about Gallifrey. That's like the only really complicated chapter because um, I think around people, uh, Doctor Who became like mainstream for the ninth season, but at that time, he literally blew up Gallifrey, so. So it makes a lot of sense why you would have an episode dedicated to just telling you what Gallifrey is. Uh, the final episode was basically about the Daleks. And we have a little, and even episode uh, 14 was technically a sort of epilogue where it's just, it's like a random adventure. <laughs> basically, basically, the last episode kind of plays out more like a, tra a traditional Doctor Who story from the show where it's like, it's just kind of a self-contained thing where it's trying to where it's trying to do continuity, but at the same time it's trying to be it's trying to be its own thing. It's really good. I don't really have anything to say uh, more about the plot because because in essence I'm not I wouldn't be talking about like a single plot. I'd be talking about like thirteen different plots and with how the story is supposed to be structured, like a teaching tool more or less. I don't think it'd be worth it to kind of get too deep into each individual plot. Again, it, I, again, each plot, each episode is basically told in a way that anyone with no knowledge of what is what Doctor Who is would be able to understand and digest and want to learn more of. Characters! Um, so here's the thing, because the Doctor is a very, very hard character. I said this before in like other Doctor Who related reviews doctor who is very is a very very hard character to talk about because of the whole re um uh, the whole reincarnation thing like oh he dies and he comes back as a completely different person and this one has like uh doctor fourth doctor who's based off tom baker the tom baker and he's very uh, the doctor is very affable he like he he tries to solve everything like very peaceful and like very confusing ways like like oh you want a jelly baby hmm oh who wants a jelly baby you want a jelly baby and more of a kind of goofball sort of thing and then a contrast with tails being something of a naive little fox who who basically kind of learns everything like he want like he learns how to build a sonic screwdriver he joins the doctor because he wants to build a d roboticizer um yeah. that's honestly like the the flaw with this type of story is the whole point of the story is you're trying to teach people about this but that kind of leave that kind of leaves kind of like the double-edged sword where you, while you're doing this teaching tool you can't really have a lot of deep character development with the characters so the doctor doesn't really change that much tails kind of changes but he mainly stays the same pretty much the entire time again this is more this is more just how this, these types of stories have to be done like because the whole point is they're supposed to be teaching tools so i, I so i understand why the characters are for the most part flat because 
because you try and complex the store, you try and make them the characters complex, and you're not, then you, the story wouldn't be a teaching tool. Uh, but the characters do get the job done in the context of the story. You still, especially since the whole point of the story is you kind of you're kind of reading the story through tales narrating it. Doctor, the doctor is very fun. Sarah Jane, when she comes, when she joins at the end of episode three, uh, she is fun to be around. She's a great character. Tails is a great character. Like the, even when Knuckles and spoiler alert, Shadow shows up, uh, even when they join, they're kind of fun to hang around. They have like their quirks and stuff like that, and they're just they're just overall kind of an, a joy to be around. But they're not really. But again, they're not supposed to be complex characters because that's not what the story is trying to tell. Uh, grammar-wise, it's, the grammar is really the, the grammar is really done well done. The sentence structure is really well done. It captures that feel of of a, a sort of kid story, like a, a story, uh, like a like, like a teaching story, like it, it's a, a educational, I could say. Uh, the story does kind of dates itself because I don't because I think. And it does have like the Barack Obama inauguration speech in the story. It doesn't really that doesn't really impact the story, but it, it it does date it a little bit because it doesn't really it doesn't really take place during it. It's just it's just the fact that the author wrote the inauguration speech into the story itself that kind of dates it. Uh, but again, doesn't doesn't detract from anything. Uh, the sentence structure is really done. It's really well done. Uh, the pacing is 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 fast enough that you know it kind of captures the speed and the feel of anything. But and and along with the plot is very simplistic, so you kind of want these more more fasty paced stories because a lot of kids, a lot of people who wouldn't know anything would kind of want to understand. But when it actually tries to get into the nitty gritty and try and explain things. Like with the Gallifrey chapter, then it does slow down drastically, which does make which does impact the story. It doesn't negatively impact the story, but it it tell but you can easily tell when the author is trying to explain things by you can visibly tell the author putting in more prose, leaving out less and less uh, dialogue and stuff like that. That he's basically trying to explain certain concepts, certain uh, certain traits, certain ideals of the show, show without trying to compromise that whole kids like feel to it. And overall, I think that's actually a pretty good move. Um. So what would I what would I rate this story? Would I recommend this? Honestly, the story is not for me, and that's because I at least tr I tried to get into Doctor Who. I couldn't. It's, it's not for me. But I can appreciate the simple fact that the the author was trying to go for trying to go for a specific feel, despite the fact I personally don't like it. I can easily recommend this to anyone who wants to get. No idea why that happened. Where was I? Oh, yeah. I could easily recommend this story to anyone who wants to get into Doctor Who, but doesn't know where to go, where to start, because for the most part, these are just made-up stories, but you can but it teaches you the bare basics of what Doctor Who is, what he does, who he is, uh, certain thematic aspects of it. Again, the Daleks show up, so there's, of course, going to be an episode on the Daleks. It teaches you all that neat and juicy stuff. Uh, favorite part, um, in chat, in episode three, there is a part where like Sarah J where, uh, Dr. Robotnik actually kind of captures the TARDIS and puts him in his lair and then they get out and then he confronts them and then Sarah Jane gets like mad. He's like, you know what? No, I need, I got the proper motivation. And then she starts slapping uh, Robotnik city because uh, it's just, it's actually kind of fun. It's like, you will let us go. <laughs> Eggman, and of course they gotta throw that. The, the story also references the whole Eggman because uh, 
in the comics for a while, in the early days of the comics, they only referred to him as Robotnik, the whole Eggman thing. I think... I think narrative-wise, even in the games, I think the Eggman only really was introduced in Sonic Adventure. Uh, more likely wrong on that, because uh, maybe that's mainly because of the whole system limitations on like the earliest Sonic games, so it's like very, very hard to tell. But I do like this story. I don't... It's not for me. I wouldn't go out of my way to read it again. Uh, but... I don't... Oh, wait, wait. What would I change? Uh, nothing, really. Just... Uh, yeah. Maybe get rid, maybe get rid of the Harry Potter cameo. That, that, that Harry Potter cameo is, like, so forced. But it's, like, it's in the epilogue. It's, it's kind of out of the way. It's all, like, chapter 97... So it's literally at the end of the story, and it has like no bearing on the plot. So I was like, I can f be nagle it. Yeah, let it pass. I'll let it slide. Uh, but yeah, that's my review on Tales of Tarsa. I do think the story is good for what it's trying to tell. It's it's a good educational story on if you ever want to get into Doctor Who. I don't I think that is what the author is trying to do. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I, I, I honestly think that's what he was trying to do. But yeah, I do. It's a good story, just not, just not in my taste. So this has been Dark Symphony Seven Seven Seven, and cut. <laughs>